Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video of how I painted Wagala. A Wagala bush is growing in my front yard. I'd never seen one before I moved to this home five years ago, and it's just beautiful. The blossoms are so lovely and delicate and profuse. They're very fragrant as well. I needed to make a card for a very special person, and I wanted to make something pretty. So I decided to paint some of these beautiful blooms. I hope you'll enjoy it, maybe learn something, and give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. When I'm painting a white flower, I usually paint with a darker background to show off white flower in a positive negative space type of situation. Here I decided to do some sketching of the flower with masking fluid. I also came in with some very pale green paint to sketch out the leaves and the stems. I wanted to surround the two blooms with lots and lots of bright colors and dark colors. And I'm starting with the background. There was some bright sunlight on this plant when I took the pictures that I took for reference. So I'm beginning by using lots of yellows in the leaves. I'm putting in some pink for the background color to look like there's blurred blossoms in the background or maybe buds. The buds of these flowers are quite pink. Now I've used masking fluid to mask in the inner parts of the flowers because they will be shaded on the petals. I'm wetting down the area between the leaves and then I'm coming in with some brighter colors of paint to let the paint flow and spread around on a wet on wet type of approach. This way the colors are sort of flowing into each other and keeping blurry like the background colors. I'm using sap green, hooker's green dark, viridian, and cadmium yellow here. I'm also using some permanent rose. Here I'm using more Hooker's Green Dark, and in some cases I'm mixing that with indigo to make some true darks. Those darks will really make the white flower stand out. I continue to work my way around the surface of the background defining the flowers as I paint the background. You could see me doing some blending with a damp brush as well. I 
I've painted in the same manner over much of the background. I've only left whites where I want to further work and make some more definitive type of colors or some very pale colors such as whites that are shaded. Coming into the flowers, since the background's dry, I am painting just plain water over some sections of the flower petals. This is where I will begin my shading. Without color, those masked areas in the middle of the flowers would not show up at all, because white on white obviously wouldn't show anything. So I'm using the flower colors toward the center, permanent rose and cadmium yellow. And what I like about masking is I don't have to paint around all those little lines. They're just already there. I am following my reference photo very closely at this point, since this is not a flower that I'm very familiar with. Now I'm beginning to do some shading of the petals. What I'm using is a mixture of ultramarine blue and a little bit of permanent rose. I've grayed it down some with some Payne's Gray. But I like that hint of purple. The petals that are not being overlapped, the ones that are on top, will be lighter in color, almost white on their edge, or sometimes they are pure white. And what they overlap will have more shadowing or shading, because they're casting a shadow beneath them. As I go inward, I shade more, because the flower is folding inward into sort of a little cup. As it moves outward, it curls outward and catches a lot more sun. So that will be a much whiter or lighter area of the flower petal. After I put the color down, I am softening. And you see me just repeatedly softening with a damp brush. I don't want the lines in this painting to be harsh. I want the flower color to be soft and gentle. And leaving that one for now, I'm moving to the next. Starting with mostly just water, so I can again do wet on wet work. Once the water is where I want it, I bring in the colors. The same again, the permanent rose and the cadmium yellow. And beginning the shading colors on the inner parts of the flower and on the outer parts of the petals that are being overlapped, as well as ones with linear details and little veins. Now I'm trying, and being mostly successful here anyway, not to mix the purple colors together with the yellow colors. If I want some fresh, bright, pretty colors, I do not want to mix those two, which in particular are complementary colors, and will tend to gray each other out. So I'm putting the color down but not blending it heavily because purple and yellow together again will cancel each other out and make it gray. Putting in the little lines for the veins 
and little details I see in the petals and softening them repeatedly. And wet on wet, I'm painting in more details on this top petal. Flowers start starting to be shaded. I'm going back to the background. The leaves of this particular bush are variegated. So they're lighter in, in one color, and then there's a darker pattern on top of that color. So I'm painting in some of that variegation of color. To let it show on some of the leaves. I'm also coming in quite close to the flowers with a strong dark. This mix again is hooker's green dark and indigo. And you could see how it's accenting the white flowers and making them really stand out. Watercolor fades as it dries, as you know, which means I will have to do this several more times to get the depth of color that I want. And moving back to the flowers again, I'm darkening the center to give it a little bit more accent color. And also to make the white stamens stand out more. I'm using a deep purple color for this. I'm putting in a little bit more of my permanent rose. I'm also accenting some of my shadows where one petal overlaps the next. And there you see me going back and adding another layer of color to some of the darks in the background. Dry again, I'm taking off my masking. Would you leave those stamens the color of white, or would you enhance them a little bit? They look sort of pretty and delicate just that way, so it's always a choice I have to make. but I decided I was going to enhance them and give them more detail. And I've painted them largely in with a pale cadmium yellow.
As I draw toward the end of my painting and toward being done, I'm going back in with a damp brush around all of my petals. What I'm doing is softening their hard line between the background and the petal because I want the petals to look soft. And you can see I'm going over them with that damp brush and just softening the blend. Softening all these little edges all the way around the flowers. In places where it looks really good and just perfect as is, I'll leave it alone and I'll leave it hard and defined. But in other places, I want it to be soft and the petal to look fragile and not like a hard edge plastic thing. You do a lot of rinsing of your brush when you're softening and blending like this. Working with a dirty brush is just going to spread around dark colors where you don't want them. And if you want white, you got to keep rinsing your brush. It's done. And I signed it. I hope you enjoyed watching my video of how I painted Wigella. If you enjoyed it, please feel free to leave some comments or questions in the comments section below. Give it a thumbs up, and there's a place where you can subscribe as well. If you ring the bell, you won't miss any future videos. There's other links also below where you can check out my Facebook art page, my blog, some products I like to use, and some products that I create. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you next time.